All right, hey guys, this is Max, and today we're going to be talking about the Yeti Link expansion module. So, first off, this is a product from Goal Zero, and this is specifically for their external batteries. So, we're going to be talking about the Link, of course, but we also have to talk about the battery that this connects to, which is the tank battery, specifically from Goal Zero. And then at the end, I'll talk about some extra information where you can go and uh, just my recommendations overall. So first off, let's get into, uh, oh, first subscribe and hit the bell if you enjoy the video. I come out with a bunch of content like this um, every week, just a couple videos every week. Like the video if you enjoy it, of course, and then comment if you have anything to say, as always. Uh, welcome to whatever you have to say. All right, so first off, let's talk about the Yeti Link. So the Link is, looks like that. That's exactly what it is. And this goes on top of the uh, most of the lithium solar generators, the the heavy duty ones. So I'll I'll show you an example in a sec. So it's specifically for expansion batteries, the Yeti tank battery, which we'll talk about next. That's what it is. The it's a larger battery that is only with Goal Zero products. So um, yeah, I'll give you a picture of that in the next bubble that I go through after going through this. So first off, it works with the Yeti 1000 to 3000 lithium. So it's the 1000, 1400, and then the 3000 lithium that this connects with. Plus you will get to connect it with X models. I don't know exactly which ones, but I'm assuming it's 1000 and greater. So the 1000 X has not come out yet, but it should come out relatively soon this year, which is 2021. So uh, it should be able to connect to that as well. Then it fits into the top of the power station. So this is an example that I have for you, the Yeti 3000X, which is their newer model. The way it works is you flip the lid and this right portion is where you put it. And then on the left is where you put the power supply to charge it up. So that it comes from the wall, goes in here, and then it plugs into this input to charge the uh, batteries up, the external batteries. All right, now we'll talk about some details, some more in-depth features. This is basically just from Goal Zero's website on the product. So it must not exceed the 22 volt input limit. It has a eight millimeter charging port, which I showed you, it was the blue rim uh, piece that's back here. It says blue rim, that's the input. And then We have the, uh, so it should not exceed 150 watts. So it's 120 watts of AC connector, so that shouldn't be an issue. And then also it has a 65 amp charge controller for external battery uh, connector. So that's just the, that's just within here. And it has some more information here that you can uh, check over just in case you wanna make sure everything is correct. And then some basic stuff, it weighs one and a half pounds. It has a warranty of up to 12 months, and then there's its dimensions. So, I mean, if you really wanna know that, there you go. And then it uses ABS plastic. So that's all. I think the more important stats of like regarding weight and dimensions have to do with the Yeti tank battery. So this is the Yeti tank. It's a lead acid battery. And this is, from, this is directly from Goal Zero's website. And so you can see the separate stats, but the main ones here, so, the charge time with with the 72 watt wall charger but that doesn't make sense because it comes with the yeti link comes with 120 watt charger so it says 18 hours but you can reduce that you could do some math there and reduce it I'm not sure why it says 72 watts because it comes with a power supply that's a lot more powerful anyway we have the battery details so it's lead acid agm battery so it's going to be heavy and we'll get into the weight in just a sec, but it's 1200 watt hours. So that's a pretty big battery. And um, it, the only thing is it's lead acid, so it's gonna be heavy. You're not gonna be able to really move it around too much. It's 77.1 pounds, and then the dimensions are right there for you. So it's in a good, um, not necessarily the dimensions, but the uh, shape is in a good position. You could stack up to two of those, so you could stack one on top of the other, and then, um, yeah, you can't stack more than two. I'm pretty sure the maximum is only two. That's what they recommend. 
All right, lastly, we'll talk about pros, cons, and then some takeaways, and then we'll be out of here. So pros and cons of this expansion module. And also with the tank, because they have to be together. But you get extra battery life, so you get that extra 1,200 watt hours at least, unless you want to keep on going and get more of those external batteries. So you'll get a good amount of ex extra battery life in addition to whatever solar generator or power station you have. So that's a nice chunk of additional power. It's easy to set up. So there's videos on YouTube showing you exactly how to set it up, people who have these systems, and also GoZero has their own video. But you just connect these two connectors and then you connect the power supply to the generator. It's not very hard, so that's a nice feature. And then also you get a 12 month warranty. So that seems like a good warranty. I'm not sure how, if that is a good warranty compared to other systems that have this sort of thing, but at least they have something. So 12 months, there you go. So for cons, now this is where it gets pretty important. So it takes the place of the MPPT module. So what the MPPT module is, it's an extra charge controller. So you can have uh, more efficient solar charging specifically but also even ac charging that looks it looks just like the yeti link so people who don't know what it is it looks identical to this but it's specifically for more efficient charging you won't get the availability of that charge controller because it takes the place of this so you can have this or the mppt inside at one time so that might be a problem if you want to use a, that additional MPPT charge controller that looks like this, you can, you'll have to manually take out this and then insert the MPPT when you're charging up. So that seems like it would be kind of uh, a hassle, but if you're willing to do that, that's fine. But if you don't even need the MPPT module, then you should be fine. I mean, the X models already come with one uh, MPPT, so it's up to you. It depends on how fast you really want to charge things up, especially from solar. So the next thing here is the cost. So it costs $400 to have this link, and it, that is not including the battery. The external battery is $450, so that's a lot of money just for an external battery. That's, a, that's like a lot of money. <laughs> We're talking like $700, $800. So, I mean, it's up to you if you want to do that. If you really want power, it'll be worth it. And if you want to connect multiple uh, tank batteries, like four of them or just more than one it might it'll, it'll definitely be more valuable to you then but if you're just connecting one external battery and you need to get a 400 hundred dollar um link just to connect the battery and then you're paying an extra 450 for it that's way too much money i think so uh, this is mainly i think for people who want to get more than one external battery that's where it would be most uh, valuable but if you just want one battery and you don't mind the money or the cost of it, then that's up to you if you want to get it. So here's the thing with the cost. So the external battery costs $450. This is the Goal Zero, the Yeti 1250 battery. The Yeti 1250 was an older model solar generator that clearly uses a lead acid battery. This is a lead acid. And that has a, I believe it's exactly 1200 watt hours for this battery. So I'm wondering if Goal Zero used this battery and just put it in the the tank external battery. I don't know for sure, but it seems like it because the weight of this battery is around 70 or 75 pounds, which is just like the, the uh, Yeti tank, yet it costs $250. So that's a lot less than 450. And I don't understand how... Or, or the difference in pricing there and why it's so so much more it's probably because of the connections and the extra technology included with the yeti tank but that's just to give you a perspective of the price of the uh, tank external battery all right and then this is where this is just another example of the uh the lid so once again this is where the expansion module will go and uh, that's also where the mppt goes 
Lastly, the expansion batteries are heavy. So as I was saying with that example of the Yeti 1250 battery, they're, the external batteries are 70, 71 pounds. They're bulky. So you wanna make sure that you have the muscle to uh, move those around and, and set them in a place, hopefully for a long time. All right, and then let's get into some key takeaways from this whole thing. So uh, on the left here, you can see all the batteries stacked up with the solar generator on top. And then you have the link on the right. So my recommendations basically are just to get it if you want to have simplicity. The reason why it's simple is because you only have a few connections. It's not too hard to set up and you're not gonna have to measure a bunch of different things in terms of uh, like volts, amps, watts. You're not gonna have to do a ton of, of stuff in order to make this work. It's just you connect it. So the price is heavy, but it might be worth it if you just want it to be simple, you just want it to be done. You don't wanna have to do all this extra work. Up to you. And then, yeah, basically just what I said. If you don't mind the cost, then this is worth it. Especially if you're getting more than one tank battery because um, you'll just have so much extra power that you won't need to um, have to worry about running out. And then there's just an example of uh, the Yeti 1400 lithium, and then it would be right there, the uh, expansion module. All right, so that's pretty much it. But uh, thanks for watching, as always. Really appreciate you guys. Subscribe and hit the bell if you enjoy the video and want to see more. Like if you enjoyed it. And then comment if you guys have this system. Let me know and let me know your experience. Otherwise, let me know your thoughts regardless. Uh, and uh, that's about it. And then for more information, go ahead and check out my most recent article, which is the 3000X versus 3000 Lithium. I'll have that linked in the description below. I think you'll be surprised with some of the uh, different features of both of these systems. You'd think they'd be very similar, but there there's a lot of differences. So check that out. And then I'll probably have some uh, uh, videos linked here. Go ahead and check those out for any more information you're looking to find or just cool things you're looking for for off-grid power. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.